Zena's Corner. All right, what's going on, guys? Right, today we're going to take a look uh, at some software called Delicious Library 2. This is for cataloging about everything from movies to books to toys, you name it, they can do it. This is their page that can be found on the Mac App Store if you have a Mac. Um, and uh, I want to thank Delicious Monster, the makers of this software, for allowing me to review their software. So what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and hop directly into the software here called Delicious Library 2. Now what you're seeing here is actually my movie library. This is not something I just do together for this review. This is actually all 943 movies that I do own, and I did scan them in using the iSight camera. There's two ways of getting information into this program. One is by the iSight camera here, or the other one is by manually adding by clicking the plus. And if you do that, it'll come up where you can put the barcode in, and also uh, you pick what it is. Uh, or it, it will suggest it for you, but you can go ahead and click on album, software, video game, or whatever it is that it is. You can see it does all that. Books, movies, albums, software, video game, toys, gadgets, tools, apparel, all of that in this one program. Okay, so you don't have to buy separate programs for that. When you open it up, though, the first thing it's going to do is populate your iTunes shelf. So in this case, there's two. There's one for uh, movies and one for music. I have eight movies right now on my iTunes that I use to put on my iPhone and my iPad. And then the rest of them is 1,204 uh, albums of songs that are found on my iTunes collection. Okay, If there is no uh, cover art, you can do that simply by finding something on Google downloading it to your desktop and then dragging and dropping it on top. Also, as you can see that the, the play symbol highlight, if I clicked on that, it would open up iTunes for me and it would start playing that particular um, album. All right, so let's talk. go and talk about the movies. As you can see here below, I have a shelf. Now, if you have a collection of things in your movies category that you want to point out that you don't want to have to go digging for, uh, you can make a shelf for it. In my case, I did one for WWE Collection. So if I clicked on that, it will show you all 53 movies that I currently have right now for WWE. Should be 54, but one did not drag over. But I can just click on that and go right to it. While I'm here, we're going to just click on one, and I'll show you what it does for movies. It does give you a complete synopsis of the movie. It usually will pull things from Amazon.com. But so far, and I've looked at all of the descriptions as I put these in, the descriptions or synopsis have been exactly on point it also will give you details and the details is everything you need to know about that particular movie from the label all the way down to the EAN number okay it also will give you a running time in layman's terms so you don't have to figure out what 199 minutes is and it tell you that this particular movie which is beyond the matter it's an hour and 42 minutes long also to tell you what the retail and the current value is for the movie this is helpful because the other thing that they build this uh, software on is that you can use it for insurance claim purposes if you need to. So you can print out this and give it to your uh, adjuster and there you have what is worth new right now and what it's worth if you were to sell it. The purchase date on here will always be the purchase date that you scanned it in until you change that. And you simply edit that by clicking on the pencil and selecting the date and changing that date to where it is. I've owned most of these for so many years that I don't remember when I got it. All right, the other thing they do have is called a smart shelf. So you can click on the, on the plus button and click on smart shelf. And what that does is it will, you tell it what you want it to look for and it will pull. So let's try one. So if I type in um, Tyler Perry, and then I just left it at all in that title and contains, I would just put contains Tyler Perry. And then if I hit OK, add on that, it will pull every movie that in the title contains Tyler Perry. I have more than five Tyler Perry films and movies, but because his name doesn't appear per se in the title of it, it's not going to pull it to this smart shelf. Um, like for instance, if I typed in uh, family that uh, praise, so, just type in Family That down here if you want to search. Family That Praise is a Tyler Perry film, but it did not pull that particular one into my smart shelf. The thing about smart shelves, though, is I cannot take it and drag it in here. A smart shelf is locked to whatever it is that you put, that you set for the parameters. So 
if you have PS3, Xbox 360, and you want to do this, you can just simply do a smart self say Xbox 360 is going to pull your Xbox 360 games, but you cannot add anything to that. I can add it to a regular shelf, and you can see it turn blue there. And if I wanted to drop that in there, and I go back to my WWE rack, um, you got to clear this at the bottom first, it will show that it did add that alphabetically into um, this particular rack for me. I cannot do that, though, with a smart rack. A smart rack, it will just forever be locked like that. So there's a family that pretty good. Let's delete it. And it does give you kind of a cool um, animation. Uh, in, this, in this case, also, when you delete something, it actually gives you a cool animation. It didn't do that when you just remove it from a shelf. All right, so... For intents and purposes, I wanted to show you guys how you add things. So let's start off with the eyesight camera. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and, sh and scan in Jam Party now or Game Party. Now, what happens is you can see you can see me now. It is your actual camera, and it will pick up whoever's sitting there, but it's not going to affect it. You can move this to wherever it is you need it to be moved to. Okay, and we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and scan this. Yep. Game Party. In motion by Warner Brothers. Now, as you can see, it picked the barcode really well, and also it talks to you. So if you're not sure what you scanned in, or you want to make sure it is, it will talk to you, and whatever is in that barcode is going to say. So if they had put in that barcode, jam, a game party in motion, Xbox 360, connect by Microsoft, it would have said all of that. And as you can see, right after just by scanning it, the whole entire synopsis is here. Okay. Also, the details, as I'll show you before, is also there. And as you can see, it added to my library uh, video games because it is that smart. It will pick up whatever it is that um, you put in. You don't have to create the libraries because it knows when you scan it in. So let's go ahead and we'll do a book now. Now, with books, you can either do by barcode or you can do it by the ISBN number. So we'll try out the ISBN number of this book. And sometimes it comes up and it says, not found. Now, if I would have went ahead and clicked books, it would have found that. So you have to be very careful that is that you highlight the right thing. So as you can see, it found my book. This is my book here. If I'll go ahead and, and highlight that and click add. Heartbreak and Triumph, The Shawn Michaels Story by Shawn Michaels. Again, it tells me what book it is, the name of the book, and who wrote the book, and it throws it into books. Again, over here, it gives me my full synopsis. It gives me all the details of this book. Like, for instance, this book came out November 22nd, 2005, and it tells me that, unfortunately, my book is not only worth about $2, but it retails for $26. I've had the book since 2005, so no shocker to me that it's probably... Uh, that low now but there it is again over here you see that my books are there all right another couple of things that it will do for you is if you go into view and you click show shelf labels it will give you shelf labels also if you scan down you will see that it does the same thing it tells me what I'm what I'm scanning over what the alphabet is from B O to D A from B O to D E so it's kind of like the Dewey decimal system a little bit so if you want to have like a little library you can also do that so as you can see the eyesight camera for barcode works well you can buy a separate bluetooth scanner or usb scanner for this but why do you need to buy that if it works as well as this does there's only been a couple of barcodes that it did not scan for me that is because the barcodes was really old keep in mind that um over the years barcodes have changed and so some of them it won't pick up also, uh, I was getting sometimes where it would tell me a different name of the movie that I scanned. But you have to keep in mind, too, that in past years, they did what they call recycling barcodes. So that means they would use one barcode for many items, and they still do. And sometimes you go into a store, you buy something, you see that the clerk is punching something in. That's because they have to tell it the exact thing that you bought. So in closing, uh, the program is $30. I think it's worth it because of the fact that if you are like me and you collect a number of things, this one program does it all for you. Many other programs that I have seen for this type of stuff, you have to buy individual programs what you want it to do. So I have to buy one for DVDs, buy one for books, buy one for whatever else, and you don't have to do that 
with this. There is a couple of things about this program that I think that Delicious Monster needs to add that would make this a 100% program that would completely kill the competition if it hasn't already. The first thing is they need to give us a way to add our own libraries. So over here on the libraries, you cannot add your own. If you look at file, you can add new shelf, new item, but and you can back up, but you cannot add your own library. It is stated on Delicious Monsters Facts that you cannot at the current time add your own libraries. This is something I think needs to be added because I do have a bunch of laser discs that is not here because I want them in their own separate library. As of right now, I would just throw it flatly into um, my collection here. Even though I can make a show for them, I don't want them a part of this collection. So own libraries is a must. The other thing is they need to create an iPad and an iPod and an iPhone app because of the fact that the other program I used to use a lot, I still have to because it's the only one that has a iPhone app for it. So when I'm going out to the store, if I'm not sure if I own a movie, I can look that up. If something does happen insurance wise and I haven't backed up or sent it to the web or printed out a sheet, I would be able to show my insurance adjuster on my iPad, on my iPhone, because they go with me everywhere that I go, what it is, and we can get a printout from that. So I think adding an iPhone, an iPod, and an iPad app would also be beneficial. Um, other than that, the only thing I can think of is I think that they should consider making this program for PCs. Right now, this program is only available for Mac. And once again, um, you can pick it up again in the App Store. $29.99, but it is only made for Macintosh computers, and I think this should be made for everybody. All right, so I don't think I forgot anything. Oh, one other thing I did forget. You can publish this to the web. So here it says configure. I can go ahead and uh, click on configure, and it will give me mobile me, an FTP site, or a folder on my Mac that I want to publish that to, and then it will actually let me publish what? Either everything or selected shelves, and then it gives me three different templates, okay? So this is one way of backing up. So uh, if I subscribe to MobileMe, which I don't at the current time, I could just click on MobileMe, and it would, I would make these suggestions, and I would just hit Publish Now. As you can see, when it says Publish What, Selected Shelves, it gives me what shelves that I want to publish on that, okay? Then I would just click Publish Now, and then that would be it, all right? So, that's it, guys. Delicious Monster. The website and the links for them is in the description of this video. If you own a Mac and you do have the need to catalog your different stuff, make sure you do that. One other small thing I forgot to mention is it does give you similar movies. So this is Against the Ropes. If I clicked on similar, it would tell me every movie that is similar to that. If I owned any of those, it would tell me that I owned them. So like, for instance, on American Pie, I do own... Two, I own um, Bandcamp and I own the Naked Mile. So it would tell me I own those. And then it tells me the ones that I don't own. If I want to go and purchase those directly from Amazon.com, all I have to do is click on this price and it will take me directly to the sheet on Amazon so that I can buy the movie. All right. All right, guys. I hope this has been helpful. Hope you go check them out. Again, this has been the review of Delicious Library 2 by Delicious Monster. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. So until next time. I say see you guys later, and we'll check you out next time.